Hello, good people of the world. It's raining here in Germany. I have a plan for this. If you want to see this, keep watching. We're gonna bring it inside. Hey friends, I thought I would not be rude and introduce myself. So if you are new to my channel, my name is Kristana. So welcome, we do all things DIY here and probably a lot of tomfoolery. If you are not wanting tomfoolery and to learn, mm, probably not your girl. But if you guys wanna have fun and you wanna learn, you are here at the right place. So if you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get the, all the latest notifications of all the videos. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family and all the good humans of the world, all the dogs and the cats too because sometimes you guys tell me that your animals watch me. So today I am going to be making this into an apothecary industrial cabinet. You saw what I have to do in order to work. I work right here out of my dining room. So this is my dining room. I have to go up and down those stairs. We're going to adapt and overcome because we are gonna to have to work out in the rain today as well. Also, if you guys have ever tried this non coming off lipstick, yesterday was Halloween and I was like riding a skeleton unicorn. It doesn't come off. So this is yesterday's lipstick. They say you can take olive oil or coconut oil and get it off, but I feel like it's almost like that mascara that you forgot to take off yesterday. I'm, I'm going for like this smoky look. No, I'm not, I'm just kidding. Anyways, guys, we are going to get started. I gotta take this outside. Again, we are going to be working out in the rain, but hey, you know what? I don't have a workshop and that's just the way it is. So let's get started on transforming this piece and a little bit of town foolery. Mm. You guys ready? The first thing I did was remove all of the hardware. There are wooden keyholes in the middle and so I used a flathead screwdriver to pry those off and then I took it outside to sand everything to smooth it so I knew where I needed to put my wood filler before I put my wood filler down. This is what I mean when we say we're gonna adapt and overcome. I have an overhang on my house that doesn't get wet and we're gonna do our two part wood filler. <laughs> These little areas right here that are not getting wet. All right, so I'm gonna be mixing a two part wood filler. This usually comes, you can use Bondo. I think Minwax has one, but it has a case right here. And so this is gonna be the bulk of what you're gonna be using. So you're gonna scoop out as much as you need from this. And then this is the hardener. And to you, you're probably like, why is it so small? You only need a tiny bit. So the more hardener you put on your the bulk of what you're taking out of the tin, that is going to make it harden faster, okay? And so you don't want a lot of this. I use a flat head screwdriver. 
we're going to, usually there's an indent in here so that it's easier for you to unscrew it. I said usually, there is no <laughs> indent here. All right, be careful, don't stab yourself. There we go. I'm like my own indent. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open. Pop it open. This is a new jar, by the way, everybody. It's smelly, this stuff is smelly. So this is what it looks like in the jar. And usually you'll have some separation. You can mix it around. I'm just using a plastic spatula, mix it around. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be aware of how much I need because this stuff actually hardens within about 10 minutes. So you don't want to mix too much. It's better for you to use less and have to go and mix another batch than you to use more and then you waste it because it hardened. So I'm gonna take some, take this hardener and I'm going to scoop it out because I got four drawers that I have to work on. Remember they're under the overhang. So I have four drawers I have to work on, but I don't need to fill too much, just these keyholes and the old hardware holes. So I'm gonna put that much in. Make sure you put your cap back on. Set this down. We're gonna open the hardener and I'm gonna put just a tiny bit in. There we go. I'm gonna fold it, mix it around. So I get that hardener really nice into my wood filler. Oops. Don't let it fly all over the place. And what you're gonna do is, a lot of times what I like to do is put tape on the other side of these so that way when I push the filler in there, it stops so that it doesn't go all the way through and keep on going through. Now that I have this mix, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna push it into those pre-existing holes and kind of smooth over it like I'm icing a cake. I'm gonna need a little bit more for this keyhole Usually you don't have to do this twice, but if it doesn't fill the way you want it to, you can sand this once it's dry and then you can refill it. So I'm just gonna kind of go over it like that. And now we wait, I wait about an hour and then I sand them down. I used my circular saw to cut the legs off of the bottom of this piece because I am going to replace them with some industrial wheels. All right, it's time to make this bad boy look like an apothecary cabinet. So what I'm doing is I am measuring the drawer fronts and then I decided I wanted six handles across. So I am going to take that measurement, divide it by six, and I am going to mark every single place where that is and make a line. Next thing I'm gonna do is take a kerf saw, which is a handsaw. There are so many different ways you could do this. You could do this with a Dremel, you could do this with a circular saw, you could do this with a router, but I'm just gonna use a handsaw for this. And so what I do is I line up my speed square with the line so that I can keep my saw straight. I clamp it in place and then I saw down trying to keep even pressure along the cut line so that way the it's the depth is the same all the way down and i'd say i probably go down about a centimeter or so enough that you can tell that there is now a line there because what we're trying to do is make these look like faux drawers from an old apothecary cabinet
Once I was done with the top drawer and I made six of my lines, so I had six little faux drawers, I'm gonna take a larger speed square, I'm gonna line it up with the lines that I have sawed, and I am going to make lines on the next drawer so that everything is lined up. So what I'm doing is I'm lining it up with that drawer that has already been sawed. I'm gonna actually go right over the part that's sawed so that I make sure that it is a straight line. And I'm gonna do that with all of the rest of the drawers. Once I'm done with all the drawers and making all of my lines, I am going to flip this dresser over and put the new industrial wheels on them. I got them off Amazon for about $37. They are heavy duty. These ones do have brakes with them, but if you want something different, they had a bunch of different options. We are finally getting somewhere. So now it's time to paint this piece. I'm gonna clean it with some white lightning. It's a TSP based cleaner, and this will allow me to degloss and degrease the surface. And I'm also gonna go over it with clean water and a clean rag once I am done so that I don't have any residual cleaner on there. And then I'm gonna go in with Dixie Belle's Coffee Bean, which is a super dark brown, almost black. And we are going to do one coat on this entire piece. There are so many pools and so many of this, these little card catalog things, 24 of each to be exact. So I went and I purchased the Craig cabinet hardware jig and I use that, which is super helpful, especially for a piece like this. If this is my first time using one. I don't know why I've waited so long. I'll probably do a more in-depth video later once I really get the hang of it and I feel comfortable kind of talking you guys through it, but it's the instructions are super easy and I really think that this is something that is very helpful and I don't really know why I haven't been using it all along. <laughs> I just don't know. I wanted this to have kind of a wash, old, distressed, industrial look. And so I am, I only did one coat of the coffee bean and then I'm gonna go over it with my sandpaper and my sander, my three by four electric ray. And I am going to try to sand back some of the areas and make it look like it's more worn. And this is also gonna smooth everything out after using the hardware jig. And now I am going to seal it with hemp seed oil. For dark colors, hemp seed oil is a really great option. I'm just going to apply it all liberally and then I wipe back the excess and then I come back about an hour later and I'm gonna buff it in.
Time to add the 297 million pools. Just kidding, there's only 24. But it was a tedious process. So worth it. All right, everybody, so here is the piece in all its glory. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you like this piece. Make sure that you guys are subscribing, sharing, comment, like, whatever. Tell me what you think. That's a lot of handles. <laughs> One, two, three, four drawers. Four drawers of handles. That's actually 24 handles and 24 of the little card catalog holder things. But I super dig it, and I hope you guys do too. So until next time, happy creating, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world.